National security expert Jason Beardsley joins me now. He's the national executive director of the Association of the U.S. Navy. So, Jason, let's start there. What are you watching out for as Russians turn their focus on the Donbass region? We know the Ukrainian military was successful in and around Kyiv, but as Matt pointed out, this is a different type of battle. Do they have a good chance of defending Donbass? All right. Well, I think Matt really ended his report well there, which is uh, the problems that we saw the Russian military run into had uh, very little to do with terrain, although there was some of that. The terrain was very muddy and wet. Uh, but the real problems were logistics, command and control, the communication between elements. Remember, there's about five or six senior military officers that have been killed, decapitating the leadership of these organizations. So now you have these four different fronts, these axes uh, collapsing on the eastern province, uh, that does not suggest a, a, a very well-planned uh, sort of tactical repositioning, because now they have to communicate with each other, link up behind enemy lines, and in the face of all that, there's confusion, there's low morale, and there are still uh, there, the Russian military is still beleaguered and hampered with supply problems. So all of those present really difficult challenges for General uh, Dvernikov, who was just assigned this role to consolidate and reposition in the east. It will not be much easier than what they've already fought. So, Jason, we know for some time now the U.S. and other Western countries have dismissed calls for a no-fly zone over Ukraine. But now that Russia is zeroing in on Donbass, which has access to the sea, the Pentagon was asked whether they would consider a ban on the waters around Ukraine. Here's what spokesman John Kirby said about that. There's not going to be U.S. troops fighting in Ukraine, and, and that would include the, certainly the skies over Ukraine. Uh, and, and I see no indication that, uh, that there will be a need for the United States to get involved in the maritime environment uh, around Ukraine. Uh, what we are trying to do is bolster the Ukrainian coastal defense capabilities. So, Jason, we know the U.S. is providing help to Ukraine. Do you think there is more our government should be doing and can be doing right now? Well, I think uh, a spokesman Kirby there gives away a little bit of, of why he's confident with this. When he talks about securing the coastal defenses, uh, those are things like the coastal cruise missiles that just sunk the uh, the uh, Russian flagship Moscow uh, last week. So those are very powerful. It allows uh, the Ukrainians to deny access to these areas around the ports, around the, uh, you know, sort of Odessa and other places. So that's a, that's a very powerful defense. And keep in mind, the uh, U.S. Naval Maritime fleet, really, in order to be involved here, would have to transit the Bosporus, the Dardanelles, move into this uh, Black Sea region. And that puts us in direct kind of uh, confrontation with Russia. And where the Biden administration has been good is that they are not allowing U.S. troops to be directly involved. This indirect support so far has been robust, although I will say all of these weapon systems going into Ukraine should have been there months ago or even years ago. So fueling this fight this late in the game puts up uh, more leverage in, in, in really Russia's hand, but we're doing a very good job on the background of intelligence and other sort of capacities. So, Jason, despite all of the focus on eastern Ukraine, we saw what happened in Lviv yesterday. Do you think there is still any risk that Russia could step into NATO territory at some point, perhaps Poland or one of the Baltic countries? Um, personally, I do not. I think that the, everything he's run into in Ukraine has been a lesson for the Kremlin and those who are surrounding Putin. Putin is trying to save face by, uh, again, consolidating some sort of victory, especially in light of the upcoming May 9th you know, victory parade. For him to uh, look at more territory with those sort of greedy eyes is only going to put him further behind uh, where he is. Right now, he's got support from China, uh, and they're managing this thing. But he's reconsolidating for a reason. Most Mostly it's because he's gotten uh, his lunch handed to him uh, in the uh, western part of Ukraine. So, no, I don't think that's a practical response for him. But one of the problems here is if the United States does not diplomatically give uh, Vladimir Putin some sort of out, some sort of a retreat position, then he'll be forced to go all the way up against the wall, which could include anything that he's got in his arsenal. So there has to be some, some smart diplomatic negotiations. All right, Jason Beardsley, as always, thanks so much for your analysis. We appreciate it. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.